For almost a week, I couldn't muster the energy for anything beyond the most basic of life. Hi, I'm Jen Tatro, and this is from Jen. We had some family come for a visit, and then friends, and then more family. We went to Disneyland multiple times, to the beach equally as many. We planned outings we could enjoy with the specific people we were with, and shared a lot of meals, watched a lot of sheets, and at one point spent a day in the emergency room because the backdrop of illness is always there now, siphoning energy like an unscrupulous neighbor who's tapped into our power lines. It worked out to about three weeks of nonstop activity that month. And when it was over, I crashed hard. I spent about four days doing nothing but scrolling social media, reading novels, and napping on the couch. And it was honestly mostly that last one. For almost a week I couldn't muster the energy for anything beyond the most basic life-sustaining activities. I'm bringing this up now because looking at my calendar the month of March looks a lot like October did. It's full of really wonderful and exciting events that I'm very much looking forward to but I just know they are going to leave me exhausted. And this time I want to approach it differently. So let's talk about stress, mental health, mental illness, and exhaustion. After finally waking up in early November, I showed up for a therapy session convinced I must be depressed. I told my therapist, I don't know what's going on. I am so tired. I can't do any of the things I want to do. All I can do is sleep. And she said, maybe that's because what you needed to do was sleep. Since then, I've been thinking about why I was so exhausted. And I want to tell you because I think some of these things might change the way you think about the times when you need rest. First, I was diagnosed with complex PTSD a little over a year ago. and. I quickly learned that after a particularly deep or revealing therapy session, I needed nothing more than I needed a long nap. I think that I have spent so much of my life suppressing my emotions that recognizing and acknowledging them now requires a huge expenditure of resources. It's hard work. And once you start the healing process, it's basically just a runaway mind train. Those emotions just keep coming and coming and coming, especially in stressful situations, or if you're triggered, or if you're triggered amidst a stressful situation. And having family and friends in our space made it really hard to control my circumstances. So as much as I loved having them around, and I really, really did, it ended up being a lot of hard emotional work in a compressed period of time. And that is tiring. Second, having any kind of PTSD means always being hypervigilant. You're always on your guard. With my CPTSD, I find myself less on guard for something like a loud noise or a sign of physical danger than for the emotional state of the people around me. I start to feel unsafe if others around me are stressed or upset. And that triggers a whole flood of fight or flight chemicals that make me even more hyper aroused. I can be having an ordinary conversation and then my body decides it's actually a life or death encounter. And the more people that I care about that are around me, the more other people's emotions I have to keep track of. And that's tiring. Third, one of the symptoms of complex PTSD that's different from PTSD is the feeling of being insecure in relationships. For me, that means constantly looking for cues as to how other people expect me to act or react. 
It can feel like spending your whole life on stage performing a part. Only the more relationships that are involved, the more people you're interacting with at any given time, the more roles you have to play, the more opportunities you have to mess up and do something wrong. When I was telling my therapist about this, she said, what if you don't have to play a role? What if you could just be you? I am working on that. But for now, you guessed it, playing all those roles is tiring. In fact, I am tired just thinking about how tiring it all is. So looking forward to another busy month, I wish that I could say I have a plan to fix it all and to make March less tiring than October was, but I don't. Here's what I do know, and maybe this is enough to be called a plan. If I'm going to be tired, then I need to make space for rest. Feeling guilty about it, chastising myself for being lazy, worrying about what other people think of my slothfulness, all of that just makes things worse. Actually, resting is the only thing that helps. Also, acknowledging the root causes of all of the fatigue. Sleeping after the fact is certainly a coping strategy, but so is stepping back in the moment. Taking 20 minutes for a solo walk each morning might fortify me for the day ahead. Or spending some time reading in a quiet room before bed could make my nights more restful. And the more fulfilling strategies I'm able to employ, the less energy I spend on all those unproductive energy sapping strategies that my brain has evolved over years of having CPTSD. I can't heal myself overnight. I can't rewire my brain in the next month. I can't eliminate stress completely from my life ever. But I can give myself the grace and the love it takes to accommodate my needs. And I can acknowledge my limitations. And I can pay as much attention to me as I pay to everyone else. And you can too. Until next time, I am wishing you love and joy and all those good things because you deserve to be happy. And I will talk to you later.